Welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to demonstrate how to take your landline, residential landline, and migrate it to a voice over IP or VoIP provider. And the idea here is that we're taking old landline technology and pushing it through to an internet company, which is vastly less expensive to operate. And all I want to do is have two phone numbers, which is very odd to have two, but I have two, ported from my current landline provider to some other company, this VoIP provider, and have them go to voicemail. Because I haven't had a useful call on them in, oh geez, probably a year. But I still want to keep them just in case. So I did a Google search and I found this company, VoIP.ms. I have no association with them. We're getting no benefit out of this. This is all honest, and I've also not even created an account with these guys. So everything you see is being done for the first time. Now, I'm familiar with VoIP in general. I'm an IT pro. I've been doing this for corporations for years, but I've never done it for residential. So let's find out how this works. So very briefly, let's go over the math first, and then we'll actually port my numbers. Let's see how it works. Hopefully it's great. So in Canada, these guys want 85 cents a month. And even though it says Canada here, that's US dollars. So it's gonna cost me about a dollar a month per line. And to receive calls is gonna cost me about a penny per minute. To make a call is gonna cost me about half a penny a minute. I don't plan to make any calls. So my question was uh, that I asked them over here in the chat related to receiving calls. If I receive a call that goes to voicemail, do I have this usage charge? And the answer is yes. And then I asked a bunch of other questions to run through very quickly so you understand it. It's month to month contract, so there is no long term contract. The system requires you to give them $15 up front, and when it runs out, it'll charge you another $15. So when that $15 runs out, if you don't want to renew, well, then don't. In my case, because I have two phone numbers, which is a pain, I can have both of them go to a single voicemail, which is better for me, it's just one less thing for me to deal with, because both lines are garbage, and there's no cost to port my number from my current company to VoIP.ms, and there's no additional charge for voicemail. It's just part of the package. And the last thing I asked was, if I did want to make calls from this, or check my voicemail from this, could I use an app on my cell phone, or do I have to log into my PC and use my microphone and speakers there and he said no no there's an app there's actually several apps which i have no interest in but i did want to know whether i could so yeah okay so let's get to it sign up now and again i'm doing this cold and i'm going to fuzz out some of the information here so that i maintain my privacy select type of account residential next my address yeah enter a password which means create a password odd that it doesn't ask me to Enter it twice, but it doesn't. Sign up now. It'll no doubt ask me to go to my mail and check. It didn't like my postal code there, but I've adjusted. I got rid of the space. There it goes. Sign up now. All right, then off to my email to check. There it is. Confirm. Account is now active. Log in. Okay, I do not want a newsletter. I do not want to receive news and posts, and I do not want a developer's blog. Save these settings. I know the first step is to add funds, so I'm going to finances. Add funds, well, that's pretty plain English. We'll note it be a credit card, gets yeah, a minimum 15 bucks. Actually, I'll add it through PayPal in my case. So you can see it's going to cost me 15 US dollars. They are collecting GST for those of us in Canada. Well, that's funny. It's going to, it's a numbered company in Quebec. <laughs> okay, whatever. Paid. Okay, return to merchant. Okay, so this could take a minute. Let's go to finances. See what account balance is. Still zero. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, that came through in a minute or two. Uh, now, I cheated while I was waiting and I asked help, where do I transfer the numbers for my landlines? And they said, go to DID numbers and DID portability. I'm used to dealing with corporate accounts, so I can tell you what a DID is. That's a direct in dial, and it basically just means a phone number. Start procedure. I read that extra carefully. Takes five days apparently to transfer, so let's go. Here's my numbers. 
Okay, so I've got two numbers and it says to separate them with a comma. This is very weird. For most of you, you'll just have one number. I don't have any cell phones to move. Partial port, no. Location type, residential, yep. Mobile port information. If you are migrating cell phone numbers, you can get a PIN number from your cell phone provider to do the migration. I don't need that. And probably neither do you if you're just doing landlines. Click here to continue. Okay, so having done a lot of porting before, I can tell you that this is the tough part. This is the part where it has to be exactly like it is on your current bill. So don't take a guess at it. Make sure it is exactly correct. So I'm going to go off to my provider and I'm going to copy paste all of this information. Okay, so I've found the support to be excellent, by the way. You can copy and paste graphics, you know, screenshots right into it. Uh, let's see what happens when I follow his instructions here because this says I have to provide the account number, which I have done. Uh, in fact, I copy pasted it, as I said, and he says get rid of the dashes. Let's see what happens. It's probably right. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, this is a bit unexpected for residential, but uh, totally normal for corporate. I need to get a copy of my invoice and I need to physically sign it, then scan it and attach it. So I will do that. I have printed it out. I signed, in my case, it was three pages. I don't think I needed to sign all three, but I did. The interesting part here, and I can tell you this from experience, make sure you do not sign over top of anything else that's there. Make sure you sign in a blank space. If you don't, the company will have grounds to reject the transfer. And I'm not talking about VoIP.ms, I'm talking about the company it's coming from. I have no comments. I have the Shaw uh, invoice uploaded. I signed all three pages, even though I probably don't need to. Let's click continue. We're on step four. Total DIDs, yep, those are my numbers. Transfer, confirm order, zero dollars, yay. Okay, now I was told that this typically takes three to five days to transfer. So I'll be back in three to five days. Welcome back, it's been a week and my numbers have been ported. I can tell that by going to my DID numbers at the top, then DID portability, and then scrolling down and seeing that it shows as completed. Also, I can tell because I received an email from them. Okay, so now what? I need a soft phone. A soft phone is just a piece of software that lets you tie into this VoIP system. I contacted support in the bottom right here and asked what they thought. He got back to me by saying uh, Zopier and Grandstream Wave Lite are the two that he likes. They're both free and very stable. So let's give that a shot. Frequently asked questions uh, for other uh, other soft phones, and you can see there's a whole bunch of them here, but there's Zopier, so let's go off to Zopier. Probably not pronouncing that right. Zopier, uh, Zoper, Zoper, I'm sure is probably the better way to word that. Uh, again, I have not done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to click download. And let's see what happens for Windows. Free for non-commercial use. Yep, that's me. Install it. Next. Oh, I read that carefully. Next. Uh, I don't want a desktop shortcut. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, I do want that created. Do the 64-bit version. It's fine for all users. Sure, if anybody else is using the phone, they can use that or this computer, they can do it. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's installing any garbage. I'm a tech. I do a lot with security. I don't see any junk installing there and I didn't see any options that I had to be careful with, so that's good. Let's click finish and it doesn't start. Okay, well, let's go start it manually. So if you're app five, all right. Continue as a free user, that's me. Yes, it does need access uh, to the internet, so it's going to have to go out. And yes, I will allow it to make a change to my firewall. And here I'm typing in VoIP.ms. Now here's the part you have to be careful with. You would think that your account number, your username and your password would be your username and your password for VoIPMS. But I can tell you that I've stopped the video, deleted what I did, and I'm going back to show you how to do this properly because I did it wrong. Yes, you can fix it afterwards. It's not a crisis, it's actually not very hard, but I figured it's best to show you how to do it right in the first place. So your uh, login is not your typical username. What it actually is, is in VoIP.ms, you go to uh, main menu, and then down to account information, and there it is. And if you use anything else, it won't give you an error, it'll just keep working, bit odd.
Let's click login. Great. Let's take a minute to configure. Sure. Start test. Yes, I heard the sound. Yep, I'm talking and it's picking up my microphone. Yay. And that's me, everybody. Hey! Go. Finish. And you see here, you've got your number up here and your point the mess. Isn't that nice? But it's got an X. And that means it's not working. So, again, I talked to tech support when you weren't looking. And the answer is to go fix your server. So, you click the cog in the top right hand corner. And then accounts. And then click on yourself. And here, see where it says replace server? Yeah, it means replace the server. So, what server? Well, not too hard to find. Basically, it's what you're connecting to. Well, you find that out by going to Manage DIDs. So you click on the DID numbers here, and then you click Manage DIDs, and your server is right there. Now, this is a good one because it's got two problems. One, it has a space. Second, it has a dash. Now, dashes aren't a problem for domain names. However, it is a problem for VoIP MS. And so they tell you to get rid of the space and the dash. So no problem. Let's go back to the app and we paste that in. And no, it's not case sensitive either, by the way. Uh, so no space, no dash and click off of it. So you're on a different screen and then click register. Yes, I want to save those changes and this will change. Look at that, change the green. Okay, so let's Go back and make a call. So I'm going to use my cell phone to call my former landline. Let's see what happens. Yeah, baby, that's working. Okay, and I'm gonna try my other phone line as well to make sure it's working. Because you'll recall I said I had two numbers that I migrated, yeah, it's working too, great. You won't, you'll only have one, but I had two. So I'm done, right? Well, not quite because I want to use voicemail and I found this lovely little article uh, that says uh, they have a free service that allows your voicemail to be sent to an email address as an attachment. And that is exactly what I want to do. So let's do that right now. So I go to DID numbers. And then down to voicemail. And create new voicemail account. Voicemail number. That apparently means nothing. So I'm just going to enter one. Just a description. So I'm going to call this home voicemail create a password for it it's actually a pin because it's just four digits oh that's cool so if you're calling from a registered device like your soft phone you can skip it so i'll skip the pin when i'm on my soft phone and uh, for email send it to an email there delete voice messages sure i don't want them keep rolling them out create voicemail and i see i can go into the edit at the bottom here and i can go into advanced mode and I see a couple of interesting things here. The first is I can get it transcribed. However, that costs five cents per minute, so I guess I won't be getting that because I don't want to pay anything. And the second thing is the time zone. So the time zone for me is, there it is. Click save voicemail. And now it says here, after I got this account created to go and manage uh, the voicemail through uh, this screen. So DIDs, manage DIDs, and select the one you want, which in my case will be this one for my home. Click edit. And I see here, uh, look, voicemail. Woo! And there's home voicemail. Oh, and that's where I could change my server from San Jose to Toronto or Vancouver or something. Pretty cool. All right, well, I'm going to leave it to San Jose because I just don't care. But you may want it to be closer to you. Voicemail associated with DID. Yep, that one. I don't want it to ring six rings because I'm never picking this up. I wanted to pick up in three rings because, yeah, why not? Name lookup costs one cent. I'm not doing that. Record calls. Yep. It costs a uh, yeah, quarter of a cent a minute. That's just fine. I'm happy to pay that. Transcribe uh, for five cents a minute. No, I'm not going to do that because they're all junk in my case. You probably do want it, though. And I want it sent to that email address. Now scroll down and click here to apply changes. Changes saved. Please allow one minute for this to work. OK, great. I'm going to call it and see what happens. Press that extend test. So, when done, hang up. Press the pound key. Hey, this is Ian. It's a big fat test. How are you? Bye. There I hung up. And I think that that ring time wasn't quite enough because it went straight to voicemail. So, let's go edit that. Five seconds. Okay. Yeah, one ring. Okay. I would like two rings. So, I will have set it to 10 seconds. There we go. My bad. 
and scroll to the bottom, click apply, and then I should be able to get my voicemail if I correct. I should be able to go to EID numbers, down to voicemail, view voicemail box. There, there it is. Hey, this is Ian. It's the big bad cat. Hell yeah. Right. Okay, great. And let's see if I got a message in my email. Not only do I have a message, it has the attachment. Hell yeah. So if I was traveling, I could get that voicemail. Sweet. Hey, this is Ian. It's the big fat test. How are you? Cool, huh? Okay, I'm officially happy. Hey, if you found this video useful, we really appreciate the big thumbs up and a like. Very helpful with the Google algorithms. Uh, secondly, if you have any questions or concerns, get a hold of us at www.urteth.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because it's YouTube and somebody always has an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.